Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome episode of Push the Point, where I have got the Oxford um, onslaughters. <laughs> there you go, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> Oxford crew George, Rogers, and Jacob. Clements. I don't know why I was about to say hand. There's too many Jacobs. Jacob Clements. Too many Jacobs in the UK. Well, it, once I outrank him, people will start knowing my name, right? He's oh, still, still above me. He's after you, Jacob. He's after yeah. you. Right, dudes, how are you? Very good. good thank you. Had a fantastic uh, throw press season between us. Yeah, I I know. It, you, <laughs> it feels like everywhere you went, there was. It's like, oh, well, obviously, top eight, right? You got to the point where it's like. Pfft, Obviously, I the reason you're finding this is because we, we won every event we went to. <laughs> <laughs> how so? How many? So how many events did you win, George? How many events did you win, Jacob? So officially, it's for me. It's two official wins and two um, concessions to you know get the not 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 burn the invite. Yeah, and, and I I've got zero official wins. And then two official concessions in the finals to someone else have the invite. And then I also had, un unfortunately, George did beat me in a couple top eights earlier on. Oh. Um, so not quite as impressive. I mean, it, it worked out very well when you went home early from Leeds and left me left yeah. me alone. But then you started following me to these, or well, started coming with me to these events, and it beat me a couple of times. But yeah, so overall, um. There wasn't a single pro quest we went to that we didn't uh, either win a. We didn't come away with something, right? From yeah. from the Not event a as a. Group. Every event, basically. Oh. Good. Hey, so you're. So there's there's a crew of you, isn't there? Because I know that there's is, is there, there's more of your little crew that's. Um, yeah, that's, there's it's... there's there's normally about five of us going to these events together. Yeah. From Oxford. Yeah, we always go as a little entourage. And it's... I know, and they and they and they're 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 a murder machine. Everyone now, the reason I brought them here as well because they've had a fantastic progress season. They've been smashing it, and they've all been pretty much like been taking different sort of the three sort of big heroes for the progress season, which is Fi, um, Oldham, and Icelander. Now we've uh, done an Oldham deck tech with uh, Yorgos, who did really well uh, in the progress season, but we wanted to bring George and Jacob along because they. Well, George, especially with his Fi. I mean, George, you're a bit of a nutcase with Fi. And yeah. Jacob, you've been um, smashing out um, Icelander. You've been doing a bit of Oldham as well, haven't you? But Yeah, I after the BNR came in, I wanted a last hurrah with Oldham, given that it was the deck that I came into this uh, game on. And it was my like first tournament win. And my first tournament, I won money on. So I had to go back to, to swing my Winter's Whale one last time. Yeah. <laughs> the first two weeks of ProQuest, it was just Icelander, and it was feeling very hot for me, ironically yeah. enough. Oh, yeah. There you go. So we're going to start this off with, uh, we're going to go through uh, five, but you guys kind of come at this as a team. I know that you piloted a lot of this, George, and did a lot of wins, but it's safe to say that um, with Jacob and you ever, and the other team, if you, you can do the shout outs to them as well, um, you, you guys are pretty much a solid testing group to yeah. work this stuff out. So it was, it was myself, Jacob, uh, Nathan Corbin. Uh, Quinn and uh, Dan Collett as well. We're, we're the, the main ones going around together. Yeah. Doing all the testing. This desk behind me is the uh, the standard testing location <laughs> for us. Which I've been. It is, and you guys are literally sitting there like, you know, like a little mad scientists working out like with your with with all your little theories. You've got your computer behind you. You're like, oh, I'm going to try this all out. I've been there. It's, it's actually, it's very, it feels very productive, very fun. So uh, yeah, It's really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Did Dan call it? Did he? Did did he do? Uh, dice is it not Dice and Destiny? Was it Rule Zero? Uh, Rule Zero. He went undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, and did he? And he? And he? Did he? He won that one as well. He did. Yeah, I, I saw that. So there you go. So you can see that these guys really know their stuff, and he won with Fire as well. So let's crack this on. I, with the banning and restricted announcement with uh, Belittle, I want to get your opinion on this as well, with the banning and restricted announcement. Uh, Belittle going has obviously made a, a bit of an impact on Fi, but I uh, want to get your thoughts on about Belittle being banned. Good, bad? You've, you you crying about it? You're cheering? What's your thoughts? 
I was surprised, but it was banned and Channel 8 Frigid survived. I thought they would go hand in hand together because one was there to really like stop the incredible power which Channel 8 Frigid offers. Well, um, we'd, we'd been predicting that Channel 8 was going to get banned at the end of this season, was our, or at least my personal, um, really consistent theory where I was like, looking at it, it's a blue ice card that blocks for three. Like, Winter's Grasp gets played, and that's all it is. And so the fact that Channel is so powerful made it feel like you in to get banned, especially with how Isander breaks it to get an extra turn out of it. Um, and maybe to see Ballistical go as well. Um, because the problem is that now Channel Lake turns. It used to be that you play the channel, and if the Fi has a um, Ballistical, then they can like kind of ignore it. Whereas now Channel Lake feels like pretty guaranteed disruption that it will just turn off the Fi's turn. Hmm. It's interesting that you say that because I think that the reason they probably didn't actually attack Channel 8 Frigid because Channel 8 Frigid doesn't actually massively polarize every hero, right? It's usually the ones like, like Fi, like, you know, most ninja players or anyone that's really trying to get a really wide board that it will affect, right? But I think that's what Isander's kind of, in my opinion, I think that's what Isander's actually meant to do. So the fact that you go, oh, I'll put, I'll, here's a Channel 8 Frigid, and you go, I don't care, is kind of like, what, right? This is meant to be silly, and you don't care? Like, how, how are we possibly meant to stop someone that just doesn't care about something that's actually meant to deal with this? Do you know what I mean? And then lose yeah. to Brute or Levia, do you know what I mean? Lose to them, lose to someone yeah. that's going to come in for eight. That's, do you see what I mean? Maybe that's probably why yeah. they didn't attack um, the lake. Well, I think I think um, the, the what they did attack with Icelander has hit it probably as bad as a Chitsa left ban, mm. but for different matchups. Right. So that that would be still quite a quite a hard one. But the Belittle ban, yeah. So Belittle gone and CLF is still around, which means obviously that CLF turns are now just basically a turn off for fight. Okay, interesting. So it is so having losing Belittle has been is quite a significant impact in the Fi versus Icelander matchup. Is that have you been doing any testing? What's, how's that working? We've not much got into the Icelander side of it yet. We're still building the sort of the base of how we want Fi to build after Belittle, but um, because uh, Icelander's a match you sideboard for, it's not how you build the deck. Mm. So you you come to it later to work out how you approach that, right? Right. Okay. So um, we've got a Fi desk. We've got a Fi deck here, everybody. So we want to go through your thoughts on what a you know a post Belittle. Well, it's gone now forever, ladies and gentlemen. Thank bloody God, in my opinion. So, what does that look like? I think it actually has got better because of it. Right. So, so Belittle was a quite a deck restricting card in the sense that it required you to run a lot of zero, uh, free cost, uh, free attack power cards, um, which don't offer a break point. Whereas moving forward now, we can look at a Kadachi based variant where you want to just continue to present really annoying um, break points for your opponent to deal with to create more master of threats and strip armor quickly which then makes like a four come in for effectively six and they have to use two cards to block it um so the decks will now sort of i believe warp with more kadachi is going for more fours because they benefit more from the fours um and they they're not as resource in resource intensive as a ember blade deck is which require quite a lot of the sword cost two mm. so you can't split that split that up either so yeah, I expect more fours. <laughs> right. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, this feels like, and I know that for a lot of people would be like, oh, I don't know what you're going on about because uh, I wasn't there. But when I feel like when you're seeing prepared, you being prepared for worlds, seeing this like Kadachi Fi sort of deck coming out, I don't know. Maybe I've got maybe maybe I'm missing one or two cards, but it feels like you. The the, the it's we'll bring in the Kadachi. What's, what did you call it? Like the Switchblade deck you yeah. had in mind is that kind of that coming back into what you want to do again basically yeah so we're still like we have the switchblade in this so we've just made some minor changes so far for testing purposes so they have like a nice base and like what does a what does a post build feel like so this deck here is a pretty this is my deck that i use to progress quests and then it's just been converted to be sustainable outside of belittle um and it's seeing how that feels and right now it, yeah it feels really good still yeah yeah, right. yeah, really good. <laughs> okay, Brill. So, cool, cool cards here. You got your ancestor empowerments. To be honest, it feels quite a lot. And this may be just like we're probably just shorten this down. Is there anything massively too dissimilar to the uh, 
nationals um deck that you won this uh when you took Fi. Is it there's more involvement with um the Phoenix Flames in this deck, so I run Flame Call Awakening, which I didn't used to run. Okay, right. So there's two flame calls which were not there beforehand, and then there's the first, the, the Phoenix second Phoenix Flame. So these these are new additions. But really outside of that, it's a lot the same. Right, uh, okay. So what we'll probably do here then is to say, look, go check out the video that George won the UK Nationals with. There's a lot is pretty much a lot of the core aspects of what the get the deck was trying to do in, in terms of what fight normally does. You can yeah. get a lot of your basics down in here, but um, this is obviously just with a slight bit more of an update. So if you want to get more down, breaking things down a bit more, I'll go recommend checking out that video. So, um, so yeah, the bases of both are fundamentally the same. It's just a sideboard changed because this one added the Ember Blade into it, which is right. quite a quite a big jump difference. Okay. So what um, we'll do is we'll we'll just jump down into that. Yeah. So this is where the main changes have happened since Blittle wasn't really run in the, in the main deck. I think I've just, I've swapped Blittle for um, Solby Strikes from when I was running this at ProQuest. And then the sideboard Yelly Blittles have been swapped for Energy Potions. Right. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can perceive that. Energy Potions is done, is like a fantastic card to just have, especially oh, turn one. If they're forcing yeah, you turn, turn one. one. Is amazing. Yeah. It's basically a Blittle for exactly when you need it. If you get a turn one, you put out. Yeah, absolutely. But is there a moment when you're actually getting this card like mid, sort of like mid flow into the game, and you're actually going, "No, how much? When am I going to get this on the board?" It's a blue pitch then. So yeah. the the idea of the e pot is this is a blue pitch with an upside. Yeah. Um, which is just that you can play it on turn one, or if you have like no finisher, you just play the e pot, knowing that you have a big out of war turn coming. Because the way you beat Icelander hasn't changed, which is just have one huge turn mm. the turn that they can't stop that's when you just go off and just explode and epop is obviously there to fuel that turn mm. yeah and uh, Icelander's not necessarily always a particularly quick hero as well so just being able to chip away and i, th I can imagine as well there'll be sort of moments when you'd be like okay i'm gonna tackle the go again and then you know could actually do you know whatever and then you're waiting uh, there's another attack coming in an epoch, you're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just some people actually anticipate more attacks. Just... Yeah, so it can make people waste cards with blocks, absolutely. Epoch can definitely put that sort of um, question into their head of should I hold a card here in case there's a snatch coming or, or something along those lines, but then you just throw an epoch down. It's made for the blue pitch. You want as much blue as possible against Icelander now because. Uh, yeah, those channel lake turns, you you don't have your get out of jail free card anymore. Ah, okay, okay. Well, that's 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 cool. So you got energy part, you and love vein loyalty, and I think the sp the spreading flames is that. Yeah, that's for the uh, ember blade as well. All right, okay. So if you're gonna face up against a uh, Icelander to your best, what what sort of um you're saying about the more blues, obviously. What weapon are you gonna be picking? Is it the ember blade or is it the Kadachis? Beyond Ember Blade, I think I basically swapped nearly my entire armor suite out. So the Lynx comes in, the Tuna comes in, the Flippers come in, the Ember Blade comes in. All right, so okay. Most of that sideboarding is for Icelander. Because <laughs> okay. The Fly Core is so good at dealing with the entire um, sort of opponent, like the entire meta, that you don't need to make much changes to it. A few is two it... for like big punishing stuff, and then outside of that, Icelander. Jeez, okay. What were we going to say, Jacob? I was just say, Fi is the deck that asks the questions. Like, the Mask of Momentum is such a powerful card, and Kodachi Fi utilizes it in such a powerful way that you're never needing to be the one, like, on the back foot answering what your opponent's doing most of the time. They're the one who needs to adjust to beat you, and it's only these heroes, like Icelander, who has access to so much disruption that you actually need to adjust for, I think is a fair... Yeah. Same as like Bravo and Oldham, that's why you run the DVX because they have the answers. Although no winners were anymore, Sink Below becomes a lot less required in that matchup. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um I can um, is there I'm hearing rumbling in, in the in the uh in the Twitter space as well that um with the with the couple of bands of um Icelander that Briar now sort of 
rising up again to be this absolute menace. You worried about Briar at all? Um, the Briar matchup was always one that was a bit more sort of reliant on how early to get a channel mount heroic. Like if they turn, if they flip it out on turn one or two, you you, you probably lose realistically, no matter what sort of fight deck you're playing. Um, but then if they, if they missed out on the first two turns, you probably win. And I don't I don't think that's changed. Um, okay. So those odds are normally in your favour. Yeah, fair enough. It's um I suppose really for the. For a lot of people that play a lot of different card games, it's pretty safe to say Fi is pretty much a, an aggro deck, right? If you're going to be playing up against other aggro decks, this card, this deck is very, very effective and very efficient at being an aggro deck. And what your yep. strategy is is just let's race, bro, because I've got yep. I've got a good race game. So if it's anyone that's control or anything. That's when you gotta just do, just do your thing anyway. <laughs> it just does one thing. I attack like nuts. <laughs> that's that's the deck. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 very aggressive. Um, asks lots of so asks lots of questions like, are you gonna use your armor here, there? Are you gonna hope there's not another card in my hand, which is super punishing? Um, mm. It just makes it very difficult for your opponent to um to to block correctly, and it will heavily punish when you're blocking correctly. Kind of hope. That somewhere along the lines of this new set of outsiders, um, can can they put? Is there someone within that mix that can just sort of make fire go? Yeah, I can have a pretty, or you know, pretty hard Katsu. time. I know. Katsu, Katsu, probably. Hmm. Another already... aggro deck. <laughs> <laughs> Another ninja. <laughs> Another ninja. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. But he would definitely. He'll definitely be really hard for five if he gets a power boost. Yeah, absolutely. A question also to point out about Outsiders is that, although not in the set itself, Lexi is already a deck that can present some problems for five. Yeah. And so if Lexi gets a big power bump in Outsiders, the ability for Lexi to, like, even as simple a turn of, like, flip Winter's Bite, give the Fire Frost Bite, play Winter's Bite, take a card. And so, although not in the set itself, Lexi's a hero that if they get a lot better, I don't know. I mean, George, what do you think about this? But I think Lexi could also. I think Lexi's our worst matchup. <laughs> so, so yeah, if Lexi gets a power boost, that just makes that even worse. It's a, uh, it is interesting. Um, I, I still think there's a world where actually Azalea actually also presents enough. Um, it's consistency is her problem, but she actually has quite a lot of interesting questions that Fi has to answer and go. What do you do against the Red and the Ledger? more popular as well that gets a lot harder mm. they already have some really powerful encounter cards it's just that there's not enough ways to get the encounters yet yes currently currently um cool I, this is a short one for Fi, but Fi usually tends to uh end the games quick as well as probably doing the deck list because it's a very straightforward one but is there anything you want to kind of add or um or i've missed anything on this one that you guys want to throw in uh, and if you're if you're planning to play Fi, um, I think Bird has actually opened the the floodgates as such onto how to build the deck because there's no longer this restriction to run this extremely powerful card anymore. So you get to run some cards that you've never really thought about before. One that here's one we've been testing with is Torrent of Tempo. That's a that's a really good Fi card. Um, it's not in this list, but right um, we have been testing with it and it's it's very powerful. If you want to show the viewers, it's Soul Bead Strike, but it costs one, and it comes in for five. Oh, right. So it's Soul Bead Strike. Oh, yeah. I know that one. Uh, right. I remember that now. Oh, yeah. 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 So I remember that. That was an Ira card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. a pretty good five. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Well, Ira would play it to go one, one, five, threatening a mask, or one, two, five, threatening a mask trigger. And even though we don't get that second Kodachi for two, still a very good play pattern. Mm. Yeah, one mm. one five, threat and a mass trigger, threat and go again, and then if they like, so it, it really asks again. It's the questions you don't want to be asked, which is what you like to do with this deck. Yeah, that, that's 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 fair. So um, we're going to put this deck list um, in the link below. If you want to get a check more of an in depth um, look on how to sort of play Fi and sort of the, sort of the more in depth reasons of why a lot of these cards have been picked, I would rec highly recommend. Again, link below. Uh, check out uh, George's uh, UK Nationals winning Fi deck. A lot of the core concepts of what Fi is about is all in there. And then take it to Talashell, take it to Army and go and have fun. Awesome, man. 
right. A lot in part. Catching part two, where we're going to actually take in Jacob's uh, takes on Icelander. So, see you soon for that.